Deep in the forests of Austria, a man watched water twist and dance, dreaming of machines that could harness nature's hidden power. His name was Victor Schauberger, and his strangest creation, the Repulsine, promised to defy gravity with a whisper of spinning air. A disc-like enigma, it was said to rise silently, powered not by fire or fuel, but by the same forces that lift a leaf in a storm. Born in 1885 in Holzschlag, Upper Austria, Victor Schauberger was a child of the wilderness. Raised in a family of foresters, he roamed the woodlands, mesmerized by nature's quiet genius. He had no university degrees, no polished credentials, just an unshakable belief that the natural world held answers machines couldn't dream of. He studied trout darting upstream, defying torrents with ease, and traced the spirals of water in mountain streams. To him, these weren't mere curiosities, they were blueprints. By the 1920s, he'd turned his insights into inventions, log flumes that curved like rivers, which reduced timber transportation costs to one-tenth of their previous prices. Through observations of nature, Schauberger gained insights that led him to question the scientific worldview. He believed that nature was based on a previously unknown principle of motion, which he called implosion. He saw the implosion principle macrocosmically in the helical movements of the planets and microcosmically in the ellipsoidal orbits of the electrons in Bohr's atomic model. These cycloidal forms of motion were also important in the material intermediate forms of our physical reality for all constructive evolutionary principles of nature. From this thesis, he derived the motto, understand and copy nature. Schauberger believed that nature provided powerful driving forces whose existence we were unaware of. He saw modern technology as a bully, forcing nature into submission, while he sought to dance with it. His ideas baffled engineers, yet they worked, earning him patents and a quiet reputation. Then came the war, and with it, a chance to push his vision further than he'd ever imagined. The Repulsine took shape in the early 1940s, a culmination of Schauberger's Vortex obsession. Imagine a double disc, six feet across, its copper skin rippled like a seashell. Air rushed in through slits, swirled into a tight spiral by counter-rotating plates, and shot out through nozzles, lifting the craft, Schauberger claimed, with no engine or fuel. It was born from his belief in implosion, a force he'd explored years earlier with the Climator, a heating device he'd sketched out to mimic nature's temperature flows. The Climator, with its nested, calyx-like veins and spinning agitator, could supposedly cool a river from 20 degrees Celsius to below freezing in minutes, or heat a room from the ceiling down, like sunlight. It used a tiny heating element and a selenium cell to trigger what he called a synthesizing current, a biomagnetic force decomposing air and water into energy. The Repulsine scaled this up, aiming not just to heat or cool, but to fly. At the core of Schauberger's Repulsine lay his theory of implosion. He saw explosion, the backbone of engines and bombs, as a destructive force, ripping nature apart with heat and waste. Implosion, he argued, was its opposite, a cool, inward spiral that mirrored life, water coiling in streams, air curling in storms. This wasn't just motion, it was creation. Schauberger believed that by compressing air or water into a vortex, he could unlock a levitational force, a subtle power that lifted rather than pushed. Unlike the brute thrust of rockets, implosion promised efficiency, silence, a harmony with Earth's own spin. To him, the Repulsine's whirling heart was proof, a machine that didn't fight nature, but sang with it. In his Vienna workshop, prototypes whirred to life, some smashing into ceilings with a banshee wail. To Schauberger, these weren't machines, they were living systems, echoing the Earth's own spin. Schauberger stated, in every drop of spring water, there is more energy than a modern average power plant can generate. Schauberger's theory was elegant but elusive. For the Repulsine, air entered the top disc, spiraled inward at dizzying speeds, and exited below, lowering pressure above, pushing from beneath. He swore this vortex tapped free energy, a concept akin to the climator's biocentrifugation, where water and air broke into fructogens and seminal substances, releasing latent power. He claimed speeds beyond anything known, pressure and suction amplifying exponentially. Yet tests were a mess, discs cracked, flights faltered. The Climator too promised miracles, 
cooling without ice, heating without coal, all through an agitator mimicking Earth's core. Schauberger blamed shoddy builds or sabotage, but science scoffed. No ether, no free energy, just vibration and wishful thinking, they said. Still, his followers cling to tales of brief, glorious ascents. Then came the war's dark hand. By 1943, Nazi Germany was desperate for an edge, and Schauberger's odd genius drew their gaze. He received a message from the Gestapo. We have thought about your research and believe that there is something behind it. You can now choose which you prefer, to take over the leadership of a research camp consisting of imprisoned technicians and physicists to develop machines powered by the energy you have discovered, or you will be hanged. In a secret facility in the Mauthausen concentration camp, he tinkered under guard, the repulsine humming in dimly lit hangars. Eyewitnesses, scarce and unreliable, claimed it hovered, a shimmering disk rising meters off the floor. Rumors spiraled. Was it a power generator, an anti-gravity craft, or the seed of a Nazi UFO program? Schauberger's own words are cryptic. He later hinted at a Veil 7 model, a levitational wonder snatched by retreating forces. Post-war, Allied troops found scraps, diagrams, broken parts, but no working repulsine. Had it soared, or was it a wartime fever dream? The truth slipped through history's fingers. Victory in 1945 brought no triumph for Schauberger. American forces detained him, grilling him about Nazi tech. His workshop was looted, repulsing prototypes, climater plans, all vanished into Allied hands or Soviet shadows. Released, he limped home, his health fading. In 1958, a final twist. A U.S. consortium lured him to Texas with promises of funding. He arrived, signed away his patents, then was abruptly cut loose. Five days later, on September 25th, he died in Linz. Heart failure, at 73, a broken dreamer. Conspiracy whispers followed. Had he been silenced? His inventions, once alive with possibility, were now ghosts, scattered or buried in classified vaults. The repulsine endures as a question mark. Fringe tinkerers craft replicas, chasing Schauberger's spiral magic. Some even nod to the climator's quiet promise of natural heat. Mainstream science shrugs. His ideas defy physics as we know it. Yet echoes linger in hydropower designs, in biomimicry's rise. Was he a prophet of suppressed truths or a poet lost in nature's metaphors? Schauberger saw a world where machines could breathe with the earth. That vision, wild and unproven, still spins in the minds of those who dare to look beyond.